Yo, 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 here we go. It's the Iron Rap Port Stereo Podcast. Eli Lake, G Monetti. Yes. What's the deal, Eli Lake? Because I had a I had a rough day on on Twitter today. But these are little fuckboy hipster fucks um, who think they are above and beyond um, everything. They're 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 they're, told, they're so hopped up on political correctness. I mean, fuck Carl I'll Diggler. Give that. Fuck Carl Diggler. <laughs> yeah, I know. Fuck that dude. I know. Fuck all them. They have their little the little the little shit stained podcast. Um, I love it. <laughs> I, I, I really also noticed it. that the, the, these these crackers that I'm talking about, try, they, they, they try to affect um, <laughs> hip hop slang, but in a hipster way. Like, like I, I noticed that they like they try to snap, but they like try to do it like you know, like like. But it's it's all corny. Like the whole style is chump. So do you <laughs> want to explain to us what happened? I mean, they're ironous. <laughs> And they're ironists. The you know what? You know what? I got irony. I got irony for you. Yeah, I don't play that irony I mean, shit. What, what, what's the name of that podcast? That they, they, they what are they called? The, 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 the El Chapos? Yeah, the Chapo Trap House. Mm. The, the, their, their thing is called the Chapo you know, Trap House. Happy, uh, happy New Year, everybody. We're back. What up, Duke? Yo, what up, Duke? Hey, yo. Okay. Y'all thought you were watching that goofy-ass, hipster-ass, broke-ass, whack-ass, <laughs> girls-ass, Hamilton-ass, head-ass, <laughs> dead-ass, hipster show, the El Chapo Trap House? Hell no, nah, Duke. This is the Red Kahina and Michael <laughs> Rappaport podcast, yo. Kropo, Kapo Bieberkopf, their whole <laughs> shit is whack. Their whole game is chested. Deadass for a grandma, though. <laughs> Our, 2016, whole style was chunk. Was chunk. 2016, 2017, Duke. Yo, that's that real shit. Yo, speak on it. Speak on it. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a little taste of... Uh, we, we, took the, we took a week and a half off or so for the new year. Now we're back. It's our first episode of 2017. It's also, I'd like to note, episode 69. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Yo, yo. I just want to, yo, right now, yo, for real, player, I'm trying to introduce a man, a main boy, my Duke, my heart. We go back. Yo, that boy James Adomian sitting in episode 69. What up, dude? <laughs> hey, what's up? Hello, James. James is back in the trap, everybody. Uh, yeah, I just came back to score some sweet pod. <laughs> <laughs> We're now on the other side of a new year. A new uh, year, and last time I saw you guys, it was before um, an avalanche of press from people who were outraged that this exists. We refer to that as the pre-TV, pre-couch era. Yeah. <laughs> the moment they started writing articles about uh, me calling Clinton activist mentally ill... Uh, ooh, that was like the loose tons eyes. That was the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> we have the, two couches. Wait, I did notice that Chapo guys have been turning up dead here and there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> <they're> playing, <laughs> dun, 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 it took, dun, 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 dun. That's a different piano song. It took him three weeks to peel him from his gaming rig. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody started getting whacked when Chapo went down. <laughs> Yo, when that Atlantic article came out. Yeah, you heard that though. That was um some corny, whack ass motherfuckers laughing at their own joke, Duke. Yo. Hey, yo, do that. that yeah, their whole, whole style is chump. Uh, in case you hadn't realized, uh, we're making reference to uh, one of the better things that happened to the show. Probably the best press coverage we've gotten all year to round out the very, very end of the year. Our uh, our beef with um, the character actor Michael Rappaport and his, and his podcast. I am Michael Rappaport. We finally have the enemies we deserve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. I love Wait, it. What is Michael Rappaport? Michael Rappaport. Oh. Okay, Let, let's let's narrate this whole saga for James now. Uh, Michael Rappaport is a character actor. You have seen him in every movie. Yeah, like he's been around for a long time. We were just going through his like credits on IMDb, and he's been in everything. Right. Uh, you may remember him as uh, Clarence's friend in True Romance, who had Brad Pitt as his stoner roommate. 
You may remember him from the TV show Boston Public. He was in a couple Spike Lee movies. Top Boys in Boston. Yeah. Oh, the best father sitcom ever, The War at Home. Isn't he currently on that? No, that show went off the air oh, okay. like, during the Bush presidency. <laughs> no, but I feel like 90% of the time when there's like an Irish bartender, he is that Irish bartender. Even though he's not Irish, he's Jewish, which yeah. means he's stealing valor, even though like... 80% of his career is him saying, don't do it, Sean. It's not worth it, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Duke, you're stealing valor from the first slaves in America. You was, you was slaves when they was building them pyramids. This is a guy, when you encounter in real life, you finish your beer and go to the next room. Okay, so we were, we've been, we were making fun of his friend Eli Lake. He found out about it, and then like I guess they decided to do a show about it. But like the funniest thing is, and you heard in that clip, is that he accuses us of uh, appropriating hip hop slang and culture in a way that's corny, Duke? It's yo, corny. Yeah, we do be like that, though. <laughs> fuck the hipster fucks and fuck yeah. the political correct fuck boys and their skinny jeans, their coffee breath, and the newspapers under their stinky that's ass like armpits. That's like some kind of shitty talk radio. Yeah. Uh... Yes, um, I love it. <laughs> I, I, really I also noticed that the, the, these, these crackers, <laughs> so they, they, they try to affect. Um, hip hop slang, but in a hipster way. <laughs> Dead ass. Like, I hate like, it when I, I people do that. that. They, like they try to How snap, but this? they like try to do it like you know, like like. But it's it's all corny. Like the whole style is chump. Every time I hear it, thing is chump. And what I love about that is if you now listen to the, the uh, Michael Rappaport podcast, um, he sounds like someone with brain damage trying to impersonate a skit on a rap album circa nineteen ninety two. Is basically that like that like that's his style. Or he sounds like m most morning radio guys. Hey man, okay, y'all. Before I begin the show, the post office, their whole style is jump. <laughs> Get you ass to stamps. dot com. <laughs> Baron, tell him how depressed you is. <laughs> I should. Say, yeah, man, you're on your own. I don't know. I think. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, shit. Was a trap? What is? Why you? Why is the trap house? I don't get it. <laughs> what, you can't leave? What do you do? Who are your guys? Who are your guys? <laughs> <laughs> I should say that uh, unlike Marin, I actually do like Michael Rapp. <laughs> no, I d I'm always pleased every time I see him in a movie. It's like, okay, we're about to get some charming character work. Now, wait, was he in the uh, Whitey Bulger movie? or was? I don't think he was. He, he seems like he was. That's he seems all. like he should have been. He was haunting that yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah. Yo, let me in this shit, dude. <laughs> so uh, get it, getting roasted by him was... Um, Really fun, and I, I like I said, I thought it was my our, our best media hit this year was um, just getting on Michael Rappaport's radar, and hopefully in 2017 we can uh, start a few more vendettas against character actors. Yeah, who, who else is out there? Um, William H Macy. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Yo, fuck I, him. He's I, going down. I think your language is inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> but just like I, what I think is interesting about Rappaport's show is like, dude, like he. Like he, like I said, he's like a hip hop dude. He directed a documentary on a tribe called Quest, apparently, and apparently they hate him now because. Of that. <laughs> but um, that rule. I just think it's funny because okay, like yo, action. <laughs> <laughs> but like Eli yo, Lake Quest, yeah. <laughs> cut on that shit. <laughs> what is the Porky Pig shit he's doing? I just think it's funny because like Eli Lake is like his, I guess his like call in foreign policy correspondent. But like it's clear if you like listen to the whole show, like Rap Report doesn't really understand like politics or like issues or things like that. Like if you if he goes it goes on and he's like after he gets done talking about us, he's like, yo yo Eli though, I want you to break down for me though. Yo, what's up with Israel and the Obama administration? Because, yo, I don't understand all that shit. I don't know all the terms. So, 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 so my man, yo, break it out in, in layman's terms. Hey, yo, my man Eli told me that the Shia Crescent is forming. <laughs> yo, the Caliph Ali was a straight buster. <laughs> Omar. But I think it's funny because, like, he has this podcast and, like, He's like he has the perfect like morning radio show guy personality, but like he has this podcast. So like I think his fan base are all like middle aged white guys like him and Eli Lake who like really love like nineties hip hop, but also voted for Donald Trump and uh, support the police and shit like that. Yeah. Uh, is Eli like, Lake a Trump guy? No, no, he. I don't know if Eli Lake is a Trump guy. No, he's not. He's a McMullen guy. Yeah. Oh, the true heroes. Yeah. The heroes of the republic. Well, this well, whole. I saw 
I, I, t- I saw the video of him literally making like a dash cam video of him rapping while his son is rap. just nodding along. Nodding. Yeah, and a rapaport. Uh, and his son, by the way, looks like a smaller, <laughs> uglier Michael Rapaport. <laughs> And That's it's tragic. in black and white. I was you know, hoping it was Evan McMullen. But I looked yeah. at the I looked at the uh, comments, and there was literally a guy whose avatar was a fighting Irishman. Which <laughs> <laughs> is like you're crazy for this one. Like it was like uh, yeah, no. It's his, like, his profile was written in the Gaelic letters at a bar in New York. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're like That's his fan base. all stand for the Irish national anthem. Jump around. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like, you know, middle-aged white guys, maybe they have the Irish flag rippling on their neck, but uh, definitely they all wear exclusively sports team gear, like on the weekend, or if they Mm -hmm. don't have to go to the office, they're rocking a fitted Yankee hat, a Knicks jersey, and like... They're angrily calling in Mike Francesa's show when they're not talking they're, to Rappaport. you got to go through life caring about that kind of worthless bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> or you might have to question your place in this world. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but the whole, yeah, this whole thing started because Eli Lake was in the midst of like a three-day meltdown over this U.S. The, the abstention of the, the U.S. from this U.N. vote that officially uh, condemned Israeli settlements, right? And it's like Obama's on the way, the way out the U.S. abstains from this. They pass this meaningless resolution that Israel's not going to abide by in any sense. No one's going to force them to. And it doesn't matter anyway because Trump is president and they can do whatever the fuck they want now. Yeah, the U.S. just abstained, right? Yeah. yeah. Nothing did nothing. No, yeah, no. they yeah, yeah. literally could not do any less. That's like, going, that's like pulling a zipper across your lips in the United Nations. But like this whole thing started because Eli was just tweeting for days straight being like, I, I just, I'm, I'm speechless. I'm, I'm speechless. I, I just I, I can't believe I ever defended the Democrats. Uh, they you know stabbed Israel in the back on their way out the door or whatever, and it's just like shut the fuck up, dude. Like you've got what you went, you got what you wanted, right? Like and what I is he like mad this about? Is, like, this is not the time for uh, you to decide that you're gonna move to the newly invigorated right wing in terms of. Israel like that made more sense before there were like serious anti-Semites starting to form a kind of political movement. Is he is he re- is he hopping over to the Republican side after hopping over to the left? Well, I don't. I mean, like who it's the fuck more like knows? He's rolling. I think he's just being a, hysterical. It's more like he's rolling off of a wall and onto the Republican sidewalk, but the yoke cracks <laughs> <laughs> and it drips over to the right wing side. That analogy is whack. <laughs> this whole thing is chump. <laughs> but the thing he got most angry about is that, like, uh, we retweeted all of these like rap. He, he had these pro. He had a series of pro cop raps. Oh my god! Uh, then in he, tweet form. Yeah, in tweet form that were like, "Love the police, hug the police." I think we need to show them gratitude, not wackitude and shit like that. And his defense on rap report show is like, "Look, he's like, well, look, I know it looks embarrassing, but those were in 2010." And I just like to say, Eli, that was still fucking embarrassing in 2010. Yeah, yeah. yeah you were like, uh, that was back in 2010 when I was 38. <laughs> <laughs> Learned to be way less of a lame ass since. Oh, then. but like, actually, like, no, the the real the, what really kicked this off is that he's in the midst of this meltdown about Israel, and then this writer Elizabeth Nolan Brown, who's at Reason Magazine. Said some tweeted something about how I don't know why anyone takes Eli seriously as some kind of objective source on Israel. I've been at parties with him where he's joked openly about dead Arabs, and then he immediately was like, "What? I've never met you. Who are you?" And she's like, "I've met you several times. I even smoked weed at you with you at a party where you decided to do a rap for everybody." <laughs> and then basically, I think I'll favor you with one of my rap. <laughs> so basically, everybody saw that. Uh, and was just laughing at Eli. Cause well, his fuck- friends tried to come to his defense, though. Which was even worse. It was so much worse. They were like, he is not that kind of guy. He is the kind of guy who puts on jazz fusion records for half an hour and tells you about the development of the genre. <laughs> the, the it's like, that who- is not helping. That's war- That's worse than laughing at Arabs dying. Yeah. <laughs> was everybody at the party forced to listen? Yeah. Like a yeah. ding, 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 ding. But I love that, because like, this is D.C., and like this is the cowardice of like the uh, political and media class writ large that no one was just like shut the fuck up about jazz fusion well, he actually had uh, officers from the gulani b- brigade behind him preventing anyone from leaving barricading the doors so he could talk about jazz fusion he wouldn't need it those acela people are so deferential yeah, are to anyone who has a tie clip 
Like it doesn't matter. A cell of people? Uh, have we? Is this Amtrak? The, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Amtrak Like the Carter. people on, on the line of the... Yeah, a cell yeah. of people. <laughs> one time at one of the Trump versus Bernie shows, I was doing Chris Matthews and I was talking about like, you never get that. You take the Acela train down from Boston to D.C. <laughs> I get, sometimes they get in a loud car. They make a loud car for me. I just get in the front of the train. <laughs> get in the front of the train like a, like a cattle sweeper. I just go, hey, hey this is a hardball. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever been shit on by MSNBC? Has that happened yet? It's coming. Uh, yeah, no. Tw- it's coming? It's coming soon, yeah. for sure. Uh, Joy Ann Reed. <laughs> Chris Matthews. Uh, I would, uh, maybe Chris Hayes. Chris Hayes? Stab you in the back. Yeah. And now... Um, hold, a troublesome hold, hold, look at Trap, a Trap House. So I guess that was the uh, the Eli Lake Michael Rappaport saga that rounded out the year. But hola, hola, <laughs> hola. <laughs> I like Michael Rappaport. I still like He's Michael a great Rappaport. Character. Oh, totally. Yeah. I'm always happy to see him in a movie. Um, the coldest cut is the nice way to wrap up a beef. Where you're like, <laughs> this guy sucks, but you know what? We like him. <laughs> That's putting a little bit of ice on, on the guy you just played. He can come on. He can come on. Putting the invitation out there. Oh, he's going to come on the trap come house? Come to the trap house. Come to the Park Slope Mansion. Eli, Eli did challenge us to a freestyle rap battle, though. What? Yeah. <laughs> Why would he have done that? Because he's good at rapping, apparently. Yeah, dude, that, dude, no, oh, Scahill vouched. You can't write, uh, you can't rap think pieces. <laughs> Scahill vouched for that. He was like, I was at a party and saw him rap, and he, he, he rhymed Ashkenazi with Benghazi. And he said dude. his fl- flow was pretty good, but it was just surreal coming out of his... Egg like head, yeah. Jeremy Scale. Journalists hang out at parties all the time in DC. That's what it seems like. Even ones that like you wouldn't think liked each other. If it's in DC, is it really a party? Yeah, it's true. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's the that's the worst thing to think about in all Mm. these things. It's just like what it's like to socialize with these people. Yeah, I got some hors d'oeuvres going around, sponsored by Exxon Mobil. (laughs) (laughs) Are you guys gonna move on to uh, Millennial comedian Dan Nanan. Oh hell yeah! Let's talk about that because I Wait, remember he's older than me. Yeah, and he calls himself a millennial comedian. Yep. Yeah. I don't call myself a millennial comedian. We talked about I think like the week before the election, we talked about Dan Nanan on the show because he was featured in an article about millennials who don't, who are independent and undecided voters, like a week before the election. And he, we we talked about it on the show because it's hilarious that. I mean, like, just look at a picture of him. He's not a millennial. First yeah. of all, um, I'm born in 1980, which is the tail end of the Gen X. Yeah. And it bothers me when I see them redefining the definition of the millennials backwards because they realize it's cool to be young. And people, like, every time it's been redefined, it's earlier and earlier. Like, originally, there was, like, millennials, 1984 onwards. And then they were, like... We're thinking of millennials, 1982 onwards, and now it's like each time it's redefined. It's like when Nixon was in office, that was the <laughs> dawn of the millennials. It is clinging like, to Shut you. Up. You're just old. Live but with that's it. that's the thing though about Nainan. Like if someone said, "Okay, that's a 55 year old guy," I'd be like, "Oh, he looks good for his age." If he was 30, he would. He looks like he's dying. Like, that would be a horrifying... Wouldn't you rather look good for 55 than, like... Well, Nick was explaining to us how he gets, like, called for all of these well, things. Well, like, okay, so what he what he does is, like, I think you can... Like with That's the millennial, crazy. the undecided millennials article, he, like, I think you can put yourself in, like, a database for, like, where journalists can search for, like, sor- new sources for a story. Yeah. And he probably paid some money or, like, registered himself as, like, a millennial who's willing to talk to journalists about X, Y, or Z issue. And for some reason, they keep going back to him. And um, This is the tragedy of journalism today, that we don't have the money for fucking fact-checkers or even just someone to look at Dan Ninen's ancient fucking face actually, and know that he's no, not a fucking millennial. Actually, there's no gopher budget anymore. <laughs> I actually think he doesn't go on the website and he just he's like deep throat. He calls people from a payphone <laughs> and he meets them in an abandoned... He smokes. Par- yeah. Like a millennial. Yeah, yeah, like a millennial. <laughs> he meets them in an abandoned parking garage and he's like... I'm a millennial. Hey, I'm a millennial. But you have to follow the Seven <laughs> Eleven. You have to follow the curry with this with the sushi in it. I'm a I'm a want to hang out and do some millennial stuff like listen to my eight tracks. <laughs> yeah. Dan Nynan doesn't do drugs. Yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't do drink. drugs. Doesn't curse. Clean millennial He's a comedian. Clean millennial comic. Yeah, clean comics always strike me as possibly psychos. Unless Almost certainly. Yeah, de- definitely. Definitely. Like, even there's comics who are mostly clean that I trust. Like Andy Kindler will, like once a year, he'll say the F word or something. And you're like, okay, all right. At least he's human. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm working blue now. <laughs> what am I? What am I? Do you don't like the blue material? Should I move on to the orange chunk? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so Dan Nanan was featured in a couple of articles this week. Both of them that had to be corrected about his. The first one was in Forbes magazine. They've since deleted this article, but thankfully someone has saved it online. I like to think that Steve Forbes himself personally was like, we have to follow this article. <laughs> well, I mean, from what we know about Dan, it seems like he just seems to impress rich people when it comes across. Yeah. Them. So like Steve Forbes. That is the highest calling. It's, that's, it goes like this. Bill Hicks. <laughs> yeah. People who, people who um, I, I found that um, the people who love clean comedy are ruthless psychos who have a fetish for destroying life on Earth. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. They're the they're the kind of people where they're like, I'm glad you kept it clean up there. They're obsessed with control and authority. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They want they want psycho shit to happen from their office out into the world. <laughs> that's actually in whatever business they're that's in. That's what uh, they play for drone drone pilots. When they're attacking <laughs> weddings in Yemen. Yeah, no, this is uh, this is this is the Forbes article. The headline is "Millennial Dan Nanan left Intel to make his millions entertaining others with comedy." I called up my parents one day, and they said they were gardening. I said, "Gardening? Why don't you just hire a couple of immigrants to do the gardening?" My dad says, "A couple of immigrants are doing the gardening." I hated making my bed when I was a kid. I still hate making it. And I asked my dad one morning, you know, Pop, why do I have to make my bed? It's just gonna get messy again. And he says, why should you wipe your bottom? And there's a... Millions. <laughs> there's a photo of him in front of his Tesla automobile. We're gonna get into the Tesla bit in a second, but uh, it says being an engineer can be fun. Lots of interesting projects, numerous challenges, but it isn't really a funny job. And Dan Nanan is funny. Not like Knock Knock Who's There funny, legitimate elite talent funny. This elite. Is- That's always what I'm looking for when I think of comedy. Elite. But when he graduated from the university elite talent. <laughs> when he graduated from the University of Maryland in 2003 and got a job working at, at the Intel Corporation as a tour manager and then a marketing engineer, Ooh. Dan had no reason to believe he'd do anything other than stay on track rising up the corporate ladder. And then it just goes on about how he left his lucrative career in Intel to become a successful stand-up comedian. But uh, Forbes uh, deleted this article without even uh, issuing a correction. He took a he took a two f- a, a two figure pay cut for six months <laughs> in order to raise bump up one figure in the long. It says a funny thing happened, and that funny thing was Dan. Oh God! In only his third comedy performance, he brought the house down. He was better at waking up the Intel employees than a triple latte. The attendees, including Grove, were rolling in with laughter in the aisles. But this is disturbing because if you've ever seen any clips of Dan Ninen's comedy, it's so, it's, un- it's unbelievably not funny. Yeah, the only things that make a billionaire laugh are like doing Pizzagate, <laughs> uh, like pour- pouring oil down a manatee's throat, <laughs> and triple triple tap airstrikes, and Dan Ninen. And Dan yeah. Ninen, yeah. Um, <laughs> Now, now, now to the second correction that was issued. Brendan, do you have the... Uh, he was featured, in a, again, in a Cosmo, a Cosmopolitan article about millennials who don't watch pornography. Th- this was the hook. Millennials- At least, by the way, Cosmo had the journalistic integrity to issue a, a correction. That's yeah, yeah. Great. Let me read it. This is, the, this is the correction issued by Cosmo. It said, This article previously included three cro- quotes from New York comedian Dan Nanan in this article. Quote, I think porn objectifies and degrades women, and I think that it consciously and subconsciously encourages men to mistreat them. I feel it's exploitative towards women, and it seems like a lot of guys waste time and energy on porn that would be better spent with real, live women. Uh. Nanan identified himself as 35 years old at the time of the interview, <laughs> but it has since been revealed that he is 55 and thus not a millennial. He has been removed from the article. That's what? my favorite thing. He has been removed from the article. <laughs> but I just like the idea of like the the first porn he seen, the guy had like a handlebar mustache yeah. and was riding a penny farthing. Yeah, we all had that like come to Jesus moment when we we're in front of the Nickelodeon. Yeah. And you saw uh, a woman uh, her pick ankle. up her dress for the first time. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh dear, she's in the mud. <laughs> Dan Nynan just continues to amaze with his millennial comedy. Do you want to talk about the, the Tesla corporate yeah, gig, though? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so this is the setup for the, the, the Dan Nainan set that we watched the other day. Uh, Tim Faust found it, and it's a corporate gig at like a Tesla conference in Belgium, okay? So the audience is mostly Belgian Tesla owners who own like the, the fancy electric car that Elon Musk uh, created. This is this is the kind of gig that I've maybe three times been offered something in this world. And always, every time it's happened, the offer has been rescinded because they then look up who I am. <laughs> <laughs> You're not 100% clean. I've never... Yes! Yeah. And they're like, oh, he hates things like us. Oh, stop him. Stop him now. So what? He, it's, a, it's a half an hour set that is incredible because he doesn't get a single laugh the entire time. No, it's a Tesla crowd, so there is a laugh, but you just don't hear it. It's like the engine. <laughs> <laughs> it just sort of hisses. It's just sort of, it hums gently. Yeah. But the best thing about about this set is that like for half of it he just shows like a slideshow of photos that he he's taken like on vacation and half of them are just funny signs that he sees just being he shows pictures of different kinds of bottled water and and signs that he says doesn't make sense like he's like he's like I took this one in New York and it's a it's a garbage truck that says don't litter and he was like if if people stop littering, there would be no garbage trucks. Why are they advertising this? That, that's the not joke. even true. Because he's been around rich people so long, he doesn't know what garbage men yeah. do anymore. But the other side, rich are- Belgian Tesla owners, he's completely <laughs> lost he's touch like, with the basic yeah. like, services. Like you, I'm vaguely aware that there's these Playmobil people out there <laughs> <laughs> that do Playmobil tests. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, everyone in the audience is directly descended from King Leopold. <laughs> 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 So that is Belgium. So the so the man his his mom is seven eleven. I don't get it. <laughs> also, Why is the sign about the train funny? I have performed in Belgium and it is the wor- it's the worst show I've ever done, probably. Like you have stories about bombing that are like, oh, it was so bad. This was the even worse than that because it was just like we are watching you in utter silence. <laughs> <laughs> we understand you and are not impressed. But maybe Dan was killing, and that's like just what we are lying. Belgians. <laughs> we cannot show emotions. I think we, we, when we saw you at the New York Comedy Festival, didn't you have a thing about how like they've they, their their homophobia is like so advanced that they like they're just like yes, our prime minister is gay. Everybody oh yeah, knows, everybody knows he is gay. Of course, you know, with the teenage boys, it's just everybody knows. Yes, that that's the <laughs> European trick. In Europe, yeah. they, they they're they they're like super accepting, and then they have a gay joke right after it. <laughs> So they be like, oh yes, you're gay. That's good. You're probably fucking for money. That's the way it's always. <laughs> <right?"> <laughs> they have a Flemish like nationalist there too. They have their own little Nazis that wear, and I'm not kidding, little shorts. It's kind of Hitler Youth gay. Flemish Nazi shorts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like their Nazis are kind of like a, a throwback in a way. Um, Nazis it's, on vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Taking a dip in the Volga, like J. Crew Nazis. What's a, what's Dan's go-to joke again? He's uh, ha- he's half Indian, half Japanese. So I get he, my sushi at Seven Eleven, or, or I get my sushi with curry. Yeah, is another variation. That's a on good. That joke. My yeah. favorite one is when he opens up by going on stage and going. I bet you're all wondering what race is this guy, <laughs> and I'm like, I think that every time I see somebody, yeah. this is the first thing I, I think. immediately want to racially identify everyone <laughs> I see. I like, I'm like the Terminator. Like, I get that little crosshair. <laughs> I'm trying to identify the target. Hey, I'm I'm uh, half Indian, half Japanese. You know what that means? Um, uh, longitude uh, 43 <laughs> north, <laughs> latitude 78 uh, west, except I got those backwards. <laughs> What's wrong? You don't like the cardinal directions material? <laughs> <laughs> Should I move on to my ordinal chunk? <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, that uh, the, Dan, the, the, the Tesla Motors comedy set is awesome. like... What, is one of the most surreal things I swear to God I've ever it's seen. It's but... fucking bizarre. Like, it's such a bizarre, uncomfortable... Like, you can audibly hear Dan sigh after he does the slides portion of the show. He had, he had one joke where he was like, he's like, I don't drink. I don't drink, like, which is cool because... Because he's waiting for a cheer? He's like, you know, he's like, you know, you save a lot of money. That's cool about, like, not drinking. And also, uh, I've never woken up next to anyone unattractive. 
pause. Ooh. And then he goes, but several women have. Dan, no. And then you can hear him literally go, <sighs> in a room of absolute Ooh. silence. It's fucking brutal. That is, the, that is the Belgian recipe right there. Yeah. yeah. We are, a form of entertainment is to watch the comedian give him no laughs. And then after he leaves in shame, then we all laugh at him. <laughs> well, they do like, someone has an audible laugh like during the slideshow part yeah. where it's like, I forget which slide it was. It was probably one that was like, don't jump off the moving train. And Dan was like, well, so was there a problem with people getting on the moving train or something <laughs> like that? And you hear one guy laughing. And I want them to make a documentary about the one guy that laughed during the I Dan I am Dana the jolliest show. man in Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> I found it moderately entertaining when the Eurozone was uh, christened. <laughs> I just love that. Like, I, I forget. I think it was... In one of his slides in New York, like there's no punchline. He just shows it and he's like, that's wild, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was Hans Blix Belgian? Yes, he, yeah, was. he was. He was. Hans Blix. <laughs> I wanted I wanted open like I still want to open like a discotheque called Hans Blix <laughs> or have that be a night, except that's 2002. Nobody would care about it. Now. Yeah, that's a. That's this a, whole thing was like, I will Europeanly try to stop this very American war <laughs> <laughs> by driving around uh, the desert wait, with wait, rational hold, arguments. Hold on a second. We have Eli Lake coming in. Hans Blick, the whole style is chump. <laughs> he, he's a whack buster who we tried to stop. not understand not, this fuck, chump. Fuck him. Fuck him, Michael. Hey, dude, yo, y'all got to stop playing these games at each other unless you're willing to break out the cardboard and break at each other. You know what I'm saying? It sounds like you have appropriated uh, uh, cultures that is not yours. I ain't appropriate shit, boy. I've been in movies since 1979. I done played bartender, too. <laughs> no, I don't fuck with you style, yo. I don't fuck with little France. <laughs> so that's also the Flemish side. By the, I by the way, don't fuck with that. By the way, Eli also said that we don't like him because we blame him for the Iraq War. And I think I'd like to clarify, blaming you for the Iraq War would be like overestimating how powerful you really are, Eli. Yeah. But I certainly yeah. hold you accountable along with every other piece of shit that helped lie and sell that bullshit and still defends it to this day. So you'll certainly be like, you know, I... I, I, I flush you down the toilet with everyone else uh, who got on that train. But you alone, Eli, are not responsible for the war in Iraq. You're just responsible for kissing ass with like everyone who helped start it. And now now you're kissing Michael Rappaport's ass. Yeah, he's complicit in, in the propaganda that put forth a, yeah, a horrifying war. Oh, yeah. And jazz fusion. So really horrible tragedies that he has had a hand in. He, he, was, he was right about one thing, though. He did say... <laughs> Uh, about me, <laughs> about the thing that I invented, I didn't write with anyone else. <laughs> Carl Diggler, I had no help on that. Your child, certainly not somebody who's on the show with me. He was right when he said, "I'm the best member of the show. Right, I'm the most talented." And everyone else is well. The, a, person, a hack. The, the person who you would have had you co-written that with someone uh, isn't nearly as muscular. Yeah, uh, isn't nearly as alpha. And yeah, you I, you like know, coffee, Eli knows yo. what he respects. He respects a Rappaport and he respects a Biederman. That's right. Uh, uh, let's is see. That, is that is that a uh, alpha to alpha back channel? Yeah. Uh, uh, shuttle diplomacy. I see. Well, here we go. I see uh, Eli, I look him in the eye, and I'm like, we're both. We both live the gorilla mindset. So, me and him. So, this is like a Nixon game goes to China game, moment. Yeah. Mean. Felix goes to Eli. The, to, goes, goes to, to Eli the Lake. Belt, goes to the Beltway. Uh, I'm I just going like to open <laughs> the Beltway. Rappaport. Eli, they got together. They're like, oh, well, Felix is the talented one out of all of us. And I, what I'd like to say to that is uh, these Jews like to stick together. <laughs> <laughs> the special guest is somebody who flew in from New York with Brussels Airlines business class, of course, thanks to our sponsor, Brussels Airlines. He is somebody who has just performed for Barack Obama, for Hillary Clinton, and even better, he is a Tesla driver. Ladies and gentlemen, can I give you with a big round of applause, Dan.
if, if someone speaks many languages, they're probably European. If someone speaks only two languages, they must be Canadian or Mexican. And if one speaks only one language, they must be American. I'm sure, has anyone else heard that? No, okay. Anyway, a little bit about myself. Uh, my father is from India, and my mother is from Japan. Yes, my father is from India, my mother is from Japan, so I eat uh, my sushi with curry on it. I'm sort of an unusual comedian, you know, I don't drink, smoke, and do any drugs. I get up at like six in the morning, and, and uh, my parents are still together, and uh, you know, and, and not drinking. There's a lot of advantages to not drinking. Number one, uh, you save a lot of money, uh, which I put into Tesla stock. And number two, uh, another advantage of not drinking, I have never woken up next to anybody unattractive. Although I must admit, a few women have. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you got that, okay. Uh, now, uh, I do a lot of weddings around the world. I did a wedding in Miami, the Peñas and the Werners, and the wedding, uh, it said the signs everywhere read Peña Werner weeding. weeding. Which is very apropos because the groom was a pothead, I guess. Um, well, now that, now that we're on the topic of uh, apes and alphas, can we talk about Cernovich for a second? Yes. Because that was another really funny thing that happened in the last Is week that how you year. say it, Cernovich? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting I think that it's I Cernovich. pronounce his name correctly and butcher everyone else. Ooh. But, uh, okay, I want to talk about his nootropic new stack. Because yeah. you know, Did you guys see this thing? Nootropic stack. I had the exact no. same reaction. I have like... I had to have it explained to me, but Mike said, Mike is on this kick now where he's taking uh, experimental mind drugs called oh. nootropics. And it's like basically like success win and like Silicon Valley people think that like if you take that, it's like, it's like, it's like the Ken, it's like the Ken Griffey Jr. brain tonic from the Simpsons episode. Like it'll make you sharp. It'll make your memory. It's like a party in my mouth and everyone's invited. Yeah, exactly. And he's on a nootropic stack that of his own a cocktail of his own invention that he says is so powerful he can't give it to friends because it makes them too mindful. Well, any not, other t- any other time he would be a snake oil salesman with like a travel like a like a bandwagon <laughs> like, like a, what's the guy in with Wizard of Oz with the turban who's like oh you should go back to Auntie M That's, he's just traveling the <laughs> no, country dude. lying to people. Nah, you're wrong. You're wrong. First of all, the only people who took nootropics in history were the Spartans. <laughs> They took a nootropic stack. That's what happened at before the, the Battle of Thermopylae. They at were the on um, Oracle at Delphi, w- yeah. was nootropics they coming gave up. Gave them a bunch of straight from Apollo. They gave them a bunch of nootropics, and King Leonidas, who did look like Gerard Butler, <laughs> and, that's, did, and that's the accurate and part. did CrossFit, was like, I can feel my neurons growing, <laughs> and if we survive this battle, I'm going to start a small business. <laughs> and they didn't survive. That's the only reason. He took reason. MCT oil and nootropics. If you, you guys don't know what nootropics are, I do, because I live in the alpha world. Nootropics are sugar pills with B12 in them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that yeah, make, I mean, for that all I know, it, this shit could be him like huffing airplane fuel. That's pretty much corner, what it is. And, and being it like, ma- you can't have any. It's too intense for you. The, it, when a normal person takes it, they're like, oh, I'm going to go to bed two hours later. But when a genius takes them, <laughs> they're more mindful, which is, means that they can read five Wikipedia articles a day. <laughs> I, love, I love that he's a guy who reads <clears throat> Watchmen and goes, yeah, I am the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, he is... What's his name? Ozymandias. Yeah, he's Ozymandias, except, like, all his TV screens are porn, and it's him not coming to maximize <laughs> his natural <laughs> oils. Maximize Elf. Cernovich <laughs> is cool, though, because, like, most guys in the men's rights thing are family court failures in that they pay alimony, and that's what made them retarded, but... Oh, let me tell you, that's what Tom Likas is all about. <laughs> <laughs> but Cernovich actually lives off alimony, which is fucking badass. Like, he beat... And somehow system. he argues that makes him not a cuck? It, he's he's yeah. right. He's right. I agree with you. He beat the system. <laughs> Sounds dude. like a cook. <laughs> no, nah, dude. Dude, he's like fucking... That's... You don't see a folk hero. I do. I have no words for it. He went up against the crooked judge, Ellen Tao, the system that destroys fathers. And he came out the other side with enough money to write books like, you know, The Baboon Lifestyle, Exposing Your Red Ass in the Boardroom. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how awful it would be or like a great attraction to invite him to like a party and be like, come over for this dinner party at my house. Oh, uh, there's uh, some wonderful friends of mine and he comes in and takes his jacket off and he's like, my mind is operating at a high. 
<laughs> high level of equilibrium optimization. Can Let's we- take a pleasant stroll with Mike Cernovich. I see inferior creatures all around, <laughs> living their worthless lives. I'm inhaling oxygen and processing it with far better um, <laughs> efficiency than most mere humans. See, see like you're, you're doing, you're doing the, the the alpha mindset voice of like a guy who talks like that or whatever. But like actual Mike Cernovich, what does he he, sound? oh yeah, he, uh, he sounds like this. He's going when you use neurotropic, <laughs> you use neurotropic. I, I, when I give it to my friends, they, they remember too much and they can't even go to sleep because my mind is working. It sounds like fucking Sylvester the Cat, yeah, basically. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, that's just like, hey, don't take ginkgo biloba after 8 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dumbass. <laughs> Haven't you ever been yeah. to a hippie vitamin store? It's yeah. just like some asshole who found hippie shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. drinking green tea and he's like, this new brain serum gives me power <laughs> to move objects with my mind. No, he says that uh, he says sh- shampoo is for cucks now. I agree. Shampoo is for cucks. Uh, just never wash your hair. Are we, can we? Are we just a step away from having TV ads where it's like, "Don't be a cuck." <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hope so. Don't I, use a cuckold dishwashing liquid. <laughs> I just love how you can just rebrand the most like hippie, like eating disordered bullshit as masculine, masculine and guys yeah. will be like, "Yeah, totally." I'm just drinking a lot of uh, green smoothies. I'm, uh, you know, I went to Moon Juice. I added a whole bunch of supplements. You are you are Amanda Chantal Bacon. Yeah, I'm not letting. Shout out Amanda Chantal Bacon, who I went to high school with, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And Gluten she's has always been uh, hom- homo curious. And, uh, <laughs> when you cut it yeah. out of your life, you find your true. You just rebrand quality. stuff as like super hetero manly, but it's like, dude, well, you're just like asking. Um, do you know where this chicken came from? You know what he is? He's like fuck. He's a white hotep. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. what he is, basically. <laughs> yeah, like, like a shout out friend of the show, Rod Dreher, got in this whole environmental kick because he found out that like petroleum products like increase estrogen levels in boys. Yeah. yeah. So now he's like, we only drink out of deer skin sacks in this household. My child will not be gay. Yeah, people make fun of like the whole like lady mag seller culture, but it's so much easier to sell something to an insecure man. Oh yeah, anything, I, I, the made... dumbest shit, fucking B twelve stuff with like you know sugar pills. I can't imagine being that insecure that you could be, <laughs> that you could be fooled into buying anything. Hold on, my onit.com nootropic stack has just arrived. Will I need to be paid three months in advance? By the way, uh, for certain things that I've gotten. <laughs> that have nothing to do with my mind state. The water is turning the frogs gay. <laughs> <laughs> we hear this Chapel Trap House thing. They got some funny stuff on there. Some people like it, but I feel like there's definitely satanic content on their podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Literal Satan. Not any kind of metaphoric Satan that normal people could be used in a rhetorical sense, but I mean actual Mephistopheles <laughs> who haunts my living dreams. <laughs> my life is a nightmare. <laughs> 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 Being tortured in Austin, Texas. <laughs> oh my God! Did you from see- a mind warped by hatred <laughs> did of you the see- New World Order? Did you see Alex Jones? Wait, wait. Did you see Alex Jones has his kid on the show now? Oh no! What? He's got, yeah, he's got a Cody son now. Oh. Like he's got like a, like a ten year old boy. That's Alex Jones Jr. Like he comes on the show now to talk to him. <laughs> Alex Jones Jr. sounds like Sherlock Holmes Jr. Like <laughs> James Bond Jr. It's so stupid. Young Indiana Jones. Yes. <laughs> well, he had supplement line too, and it yeah. was great because he did it before and after picture. Looked exactly, looked exactly the same. The same. Exactly yeah. the same. <laughs> it's slightly different. Yeah, he, yeah. It just he looks just more, more red. Flattering lighting. I he looks more trick. red in one of them. The before yeah. after. Yeah. It's just because I started flexing and holding my breath in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his super male vitality shit is awesome, but like. Oh, th- this came up recently again. That whole weird thing that happened a while ago where, like, the weird libertarians that turned themselves blue yes. permanently from yes. taking and homemade colloidal, colloidal silver. silver. Yeah. That's amazing. There was a bunch of people around the time that Y2K happened, like, the the same people who buy, like, you know, gold coins and survival seeds and shit like that. They thought that, like, Y2K was going to, like, crash the world and there was going to be no antibiotics, antibiotics, so they uh, decided to... Treat themselves with colloidal with colloidal silver, which if you take enough of, actually turns your skin blue yes. and you look like a Smurf. Is it permanent? Permanent. Yes. Yeah. They tell permanent. you when you get it, hey, take three squirts a day and no more, and then you're like, okay. 
I didn't know it turned you blue. Well, it you, turns you blue, and then they toss you out of the Smurf village on your head. No, dude, that's how the Blue Man Group started. <laughs> the Blue Man Group is the... We way. have information the Blue Man Group <laughs> is uh, infiltration. It's a CIA op. No, nah, dude, th- dude, they're anti-state. I have information that Banksy is a, uh, 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 operation, a COINTELPRO operation uh, on behalf of the royal family. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen documents. Well, that's like liberals now. Liberals are like on that Lyndon LaRoche bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Where like, yeah, like... Uh, didn't Sarah Kinzer just straight up post a yeah, LaRoche pamphlet the other day? Yes. Oh, uh, it would be great. <laughs> I want I want those uh, lefty, not I shouldn't say lefty, those liberal think piece people, I want them to just do the Futurama thing and be like, we, we believe in the brain slug planet. <laughs> we believe in a, a, exorbitantly high subsidies for the brain slug planet. <laughs> Speaking of people who are terrified of the Russians and have <laughs> extremely strange uh, like conspiracy theories. P- people who are extremely afraid of the Russians but also incredibly high T. One of the last things that happened in 2016 right under the wire was proprietor of talking points memo <laughs> josh marshall accidentally discredited failure of a, pred- <laughs> of a, a prognosticator my former boss i mm-hmm. actually Will's former boss i interned for talking points memo in, back in 2006 you've actually written some of these talking point mm-hmm. memos yep <laughs> he's written a memo <laughs> i've written a memo memos. or two yeah um, he accidentally tweeted out uh, a link to porn, to to a porn hub video. Right. It was uh, it was it was a special moment, but I think okay, we should be. I, we should clarify though, it was hilarious. Sure, but one you know there, but for the grace of God, go we all. Mm-hmm. One must one must never uh, porn shame. Okay, well right. I want to do want to know like why did he have the link copied right that's the thing it's like it was incredibly first of all it was incredibly tame porn which is hilarious we would have expect him to be a freak because the talking points memo office has a sex room they do have a fuck room and he is watching girl and girl like he's it has 14 like red goddamn lights years in it with shag carpet we're, i want i want to give like a we're gonna give a breakdown of the clip itself in a yeah, second yeah. but like this is that brooder <laughs> yeah what if it's a partial limited hangout and he wants to leak and the porn is supposed to show like his darkest fantasy is actually really respectful towards women. Right. Well, what it was the tweet? Yeah. What was the tweet? It's woke. It's woke porn. Yeah. The tweet was about like he had previously linked to a political a Politico article. Is it still up on his Twitter? Where, where Trump? <laughs> yeah, where it's the up. the Trump team said that the new leaks about Russia are targeting them or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then he re- he was I think trying to copy and paste the previous link that he had retweeted. <laughs> But he had his own commentary, which is like, well, they did say close associates, i.e. being Trump is a close associate of Vladimir Putin. Right. So Underneath that was Angela and Strawberry kissing, touching, coming. Look, it's <laughs> funny just on the pure basis of that's like a, a, a horrible cringeworthy mistake. But the truly funny thing about it it's is that- It's still up on his Twitter! He tweeted the porn while trying to feed into a second Cold War. <laughs> which means that he was jacking off while tweeting. Yeah. Which is what we've always said people do. <laughs> it's normal, and you shouldn't make fun of me for it anymore. <laughs> no matter what room I'm still- I can't believe it. Yeah. Should, should we play it? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Should play the, it. Let's yeah. watch Angela and Strawberry for a second. I, I'll warn Everyone- you, the, the, the mic sensitivity is very- it's it's a little grating. Okay. There's a lot of smacking noises. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, this is Angela and Strawberry. Josh Marshall pays like $100 a month for Suicide Girls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a fucking baby. P in V all the way. <laughs> I gotta say, I, I think it's cute. It's the most endearing thing about Josh Marshall. Uh, fast forward. Oh. Let's, uh, I no. have a separate Raspberry Pi that has all the <laughs> pornographic content okay, on it. This is uh, this is now what, ten minutes into this porno video, they're and still, they're like, still fully kissing. Clothed, yeah, they're yeah. still kissing. <laughs> <laughs> You're right though, because like you said, there but for the grace of God go I. Yeah, there but for the grace of God go me. Like tweeting a link to pornography would be like. There's no more Chapo Trapos. Like, yeah, the show, yeah. The show's over. Yeah, yeah. I'm off Twitter let's forever. Just, let's, just yeah, say, uh, let's just say when it yeah. comes. Let's just say when it comes to pornography, Will is on Grubhub looking at pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, Shut the fuck folks. Up. <laughs> um, no, but did his his. It was like I just like to say that that was 
a woman affirming erotica. It was two it was women pleasuring it's, each other. Yeah. Usually, uh, they care about each other's orgasms. They Stupid. talk about they, actually like this is a Pornhub <laughs> clip in the actual film. They talk about consent for a good twenty minutes before they get down to it. <laughs> Click here for the clarification. Enthusiastic here to the consent. To the fuck. <laughs> yeah, I. Um, but we were just expecting something much. I didn't know that adult men no, like this, such tame porn. They don't. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to know what kind of porn Eric Garland watches. No, he said redheads. Oh, what a freak! <laughs> yeah. Who? Uh, the game theory douche. Like oh, <laughs> Eric Garland, that guy. What? Yeah. Okay. What, there, every every two weeks, there's some new idiot that I'm supposed to know who he is. Yeah. And that was the one from the last. That's couple why weeks. you got to be online all day. The lips are trying to make. <laughs> He's somebody that you know who he now. is if you're online all day. Yeah. And otherwise, yeah. then I am also one of those people. <laughs> 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 um. I'm st- I'm waiting for those kinds of people to actually show up to a real protest for the first time in their lives and 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 see oh there's anarchists and communists here. I'm waiting for a real protest too. It's called the rally to restore sanity. <laughs> Is that the Colbert thing? Yeah, hell yeah. I, yeah. I I want there to be like an American Mishima, but it's going to be Josh or Eric. And he's going to lock himself in like the, uh, like, I don't know, the fucking Coast, one of the Guard. Coast Guard buildings to protest the deficit. And he becomes <laughs> yeah. a 300 foot robot. Yeah, that's who really what happened to Mishima. He turned into Gundam. <laughs> I'm still really insulted that he just admitted to just like being on like Adderall and booze and just said it's craft beer. Like that doesn't make you drunken on Adderall. Like, yeah. like don't deny your drug use. What was the context use. that he was on drunken on? He was Adderall. like, I'm uh, yeah. hopped up on Adderall. Right. And, like uh, over the context was like yeah. in, in yeah, the midst so, yeah. of tweeting 250 like linked like, thoughts. Talk about together. class privilege. You know how to drop that code in there so people don't think you're just getting fucked up and going on a tweet store. Yeah, like I mean, it was in the context of someone being like. You know, epic. You're on fire. Epic win, my good sir. You won the internet. Plus I one. Like my some cap asshole to doing you. that. Yeah, and him being I'm like drinking and driving, but it's. Uh, <laughs> I'm drinking and driving, but it's a prosecco and uh, it's, a, it's a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we don't hate Josh. Uh, we're, are weird. We're not judging Josh. Certainly not for that. No, yeah. Not for that. yeah, yeah. It's, funny. it's, it's just funny, funny as hell. Again, like, less of him for That's yeah. the most. Endearing thing he's done in a very long time. He's trying to like drum up a new Cold War. The the porn thing, frankly, is like, oh, maybe now people will listen to you less because you can't open a second fucking window. <laughs> well, this is porn. liberal opsec. It's John Bedesta clicking on the fishing link. Yeah, it's, this was yeah. no, this was clearly this was clearly Russian hackers that yeah. did this to him. Uh, <laughs> if I could interpret Strawberry's uh, mouth for a second. <laughs> She'd be saying, girl, don't be coming at me with that bullshit. (laughs) It's Clara watching it. My 11-year-old son sees Angela and Strawberry over my shoulder and says, mommy, are they the president? (laughs) And I say, I say, I hope that they'd go girl on girl in the Oval Office. That's really progressive to have a son that calls you mommy. (laughs) I let him choose. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's up to him. Gender is whatever a child says it is. <laughs> That's my, my stance. Yes, I'm mindful. Yes, I, I take nootropics. No, I don't believe in gender. Fuck you. I don't think of myself Yo, as a parent. Gender shit. That Yo, whole that shit. Old, that, game that whack. gender shit is yeah. chump. This <laughs> is chump. Yeah, that shit is a continuum, chumps. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Fuck those guys. <laughs> fuck Angela and Strawberry <laughs> Anyway So Obama stabbed Israel in the back Did you guys talk about Kurt Eichwald uh, In last week Yeah, yeah We yeah, did a we little did. bit We yeah. did about a little My bit My favorite Kurt. thing about it Was the large binder Of documents That he had yes. That was clearly Under Like not Army. real <laughs> Falsehoods Well you should also You could just bring out Like here's my If you want to play that game Here's my evidence And you pull like a drawer That like pulls out 12 feet And it's got like Clown <laughs> noses in it <laughs> <laughs> if I may if I may call a witness to the stand, actually seven witnesses, they're all in this little car. <laughs> Your Honor, if my client was a bad guy, why are all of his witnesses dressed like angels? And then, like, Twelve <laughs> choir children come in dressed well, like the, uh, angels. I actually all my evidence is in a children's pop up book that makes it look huge. <laughs> it's Richard Scary presents Tucker Carlson falsehood. That was one of my Jesse Ventura jokes. Um, I have there's a I have a I subscribe to uh, 
questions monthly. <laughs> <laughs> and it comes with a. It comes with also a children's subscription to um, uh, uh, suspicions for children. <laughs> it's a. It's like highlights, but it's targeted towards uh, children who want to know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's wrong with this picture? And there's a lot. <laughs> there's a picture of JFK's assassination. And then you fold it in, and it reveals who really did it. And it was Lyndon Johnson. All right, guys, should we uh, call it a show? I think we're yeah, good. Yeah. I think we're good. Uh, Amber, best of luck in London yeah. oh, and across yeah. the pond. Yeah. Awesome on your oh, vacation. I'm just going. Oh, just sick. Just going. She's teaching a, sco- a course about uh, Strawberry and Angela at the London School of Economics. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, there's this, this strawberry and what is it? <laughs> Angela. <laughs> strawberry and and for me, for a man to have uh, an orgasm for this is also, that is the basement of one. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing more higher than to become a cockle. <laughs>